The Fluviflex is currently in a state of neglect. I am ashamed to show you its current condition. Things have completely fallen apart. Therefore, I'm gonna give it a complete makeover and do it right this time. Let's start by removing the house plants. I'll be housing them in this bucket of soil. The polka dot plant was a pain to remove. The roots were entangled in everything, but what surprised me was how long those roots were. 53 inches. It grew 53 inches. Also, underneath the cover were these very bushy leaves. Now, I'm not sure why they're like that, but do let me know why in the comments. Anyway, it's time to remove the plants. I noticed a single Amano shrimp still alive. I ended up moving it to my Fluva Chi aquascape. Anyway, it's time to remove the fish. You're the night sky trying to make me see your stars. The dark gets only. Look how dirty this tank is. It's time for some heavy cleaning. And the dark's all that I see when your stars are burnt out. And your heart makes no sound. I placed some of the old substrate in the mesh bag. It's full of dirt and other particles. I'll clean it out later as it will serve a purpose later on. Look at all these neurite eggs on the filter outlet. It will be too much work to remove them, so I won't be cleaning it. But after some time has passed, I was able to completely clean the tank. It looks almost brand new. Apart from the scratches, extremely tough calcium stains, and the filter compartment which is impossible to stick your hand into. The next thing to clean was the root covered filter pump. I haven't touched this pump even once since I started the tank last year. Once cleaned, I got something special for this pump. This here is an inline CO2 atomizer. This little gadget takes CO2 gas from one side and breaks it up into tiny droplets or mist. The mist is then introduced to the tank through the filter. But what about the CO2 diffuser you're using? Gone. Just like an angel's kiss. But why? The fine CO2 mist produced by the atomizers allows for a more evenly saturated water, resulting in improved CO2 diffusion compared to the small bubbles generated by diffusers that require movement throughout the water. All in all, it's a way better CO2 diffuser. The atomizer was somewhat difficult to install. I had to completely remove and discard the tubing it came with and replace it with a brand new one. After reinstalling the pump, I still have a few more improvements to make to this tank. This here is a small piece of steel mesh that is cut to the shape of the top inlet. Last time, I used a 3D printed cover, but it was getting clogged too easily and preventing water from entering the filter. Additionally, the bottom inlet was completely buried, so the top was the only inlet. This time, I'm going to be using the bottom one too. Everything is in place. Now it's time to finally do some aquascaping. Now this is where that bag of old substrate comes in. I'll be using that bag as a base, along with Seachem root tabs and leftover EcoComplete. Its main purpose is to reduce the amount of substrate needed to achieve the desired substrate height, thus saving me money. This tank will not be using any dirt like last time. Instead, I'll be using land and aqua soil. I chose aqua soil because I wanted to do this tank right and give it my best shot for it. For the hardscape, I chose Seiru stone. The calcium in the stone will help keep the pH from dropping too drastically, as it will increase the water hardness, which guppies do prefer. The aqua soil and hardscape are now complete, but we're not done just yet. I'm adding some gravel to the front, as I won't be using that area for any plants. I think it looks pretty decent, but it'll look even better with some plants added to it. Readying aqua soil prior to planting makes the planting process easier. The plant selection for this tank will include the same species as before, but with additional plant species.
This is my masterpiece. And now, it's time to flood it. Luckily, it's super easy to do so with this pipe and pump. As it's pumping in some water, I still need to fill the filter with media. I retrieved the media I previously had in the tank and put it back in its place. Oh boy, it's quite messy. But it's still the first day, and things need to settle down. But what about that steel mesh intake? Yeah, uh, it's way too fine to let any debris in. And I'd rather not use the default cover, so I'm just gonna leave it there. I also did remove the bottom cover to let some debris through. Hopefully things will settle down much easier. Now, a few days have passed. Things look much better. The water is crystal clear too. What about the parameters? 6.6 .6 pH, 1 ppm of ammonia, 0 nitrite, and 10 ppm of nitrate. These results are pretty standard, as I expect expected Aquasoil to release ammonia into the water for a short period to initiate the nitrogen cycle. Furthermore, we're starting to see some algae on the glass. Wait, what is that? Siri, enhance. Oh dear god, they've invaded this tank. Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! These are flat ram's horn snails, commonly referred as pest snails. These guys are very small and everywhere. Controlling their food source is the best way to control them. Oh dear god, they're feeding on the surface film. These guys aren't really that much of a big deal, as they help with algae control, but they are very unsightly due to how small they are and how fast they multiply. Personally, I'm not a big fan of them, but some people do love them. As for the surface film, I use a filter outflow to stir up the surface and break up the film. Hopefully, this will help. Water parameters are now perfect, so it's time to add the cleaning crew before I add the guppies again. After closing the bottom intake, I added a few horned neurite snails and two amano shrimps, but that's not all. I impulsively bought three more plant species. The tank is at its capacity in terms of room for more plants, but I was able to find some space for them. They also really took off, especially with the limnophilia as it was starting to breach the water surface. But once again, this tank ran into another problem. The CO2 drop checker I added off screen wasn't changing color. This had to mean one thing. The atomizer was leaking CO2. For some reason, this spot here was loose, and after tightening it, the CO2 stopped leaking. The drop tracker turned green, which means CO2 concentration is at the appropriate level. Things are looking great for this tank. There is almost no algae present at the start, unlike before, and the plants are also thriving. This is an excellent beginning. However, there is some ammonia present in the tank again, but that's not too much of a problem. There is one other issue I'm having. I am not entirely satisfied with the appearance of this tank. Specifically, I am not pleased with the appearance of the gravel. The pea size is larger than desired, and the color is not as dark as I hope, giving it an unnatural appearance. While it may darken over time, I am considering replacing it with something smaller and darker. I would appreciate your input on this decision. Should I keep the current gravel, or should I change it? This is a brand new journey for this tank, and I hope you stick around. This won't be the last time you see this tank, but it will be a while for an update, as I have a lot of aquarium content planned. I'll be posting some pictures of the tank every now and then on my Instagram if you're interested. In the meantime, I recommend checking out this video from my channel, which YouTube suggests you watch next.